Welcome back to Just Books. Distinguished British journalist, former editor of Granta and popular columnist with The Guardian, Ian Jack, has been a traveller wandering through India for more than 30 years. He's now out with a new book called The Country Formerly Known as Great Britain, equally about how much Britain has changed and indeed what has happened to India. Ian, it's an amazing collection, 20 years of journalism uh, and really up and down the British Isles, as they used to be called. Um, you lived through many ages in Britain, uh, from de-industrialized uh, Scotland, where you come from, uh, the Conservative Party years of uh, Thatcher's Britain, uh, Labour's Britain. Uh, what to you, you describe it lucidly and beautifully in, in many of your pieces in this book, but what to you are the key changes uh, in, which, in, in the ways Britain has changed? Well, several, but, but the ones that strike me most, really, are, is the fact that the social class I came from, uh, the industrial working class, has largely disappeared, and a way of life has largely disappeared because of that. The other thing that's very striking, I think, more and more now, is that Britain suddenly seems a smaller place, that its power has shrunk and diminished, and, and that power was sustained for a long time, perhaps as an illusion. After the war, you still felt you were living in a kind of important place, and I think more and more you feel that Britain is steadily losing its economic, political, military importance. Right. Post-colonial Britain? Because after all, what the book, your collection, also encompasses uh, is, is really Britain's distancing or, or, or differences from its colonial past, the colonial outposts in the subcontinent, for example. Well, post-colonial is a funny word, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those words that, that had more of a meaning, I think, 20 years ago. Uh, I, whether, you know, whether the Tata Steel Company owning all of British steel and most of the, what remains of the British motor trade is post-colonial, or perhaps it's a new kind of colonial in which India is the colonizer and Britain is the colonized. So post-colonial is one of those words, I think, which may fall out of use quite soon. Right. You've had a long trajectory in, in British journalism. One of the great stars of the Sunday Times in, in the 70s and 80s, then went on to become editor of The Independent on Sunday. Long 13 years at the helm of running probably one of the uh, great literary magazines, Grant Up. Uh, how, how do you think the media in general, particularly the British media, have changed? The fundamental way the British media have changed is that it's very difficult to make money on a newspaper. It's not like India, which has a booming uh, newsprint section because of literacy rates and population growth and advertising volumes. The British press, like the American press, is in a kind of crisis because it can't make enough money. I work for The Guardian which has a wonderful website and it's got a wonderful online presence, but getting money from, from the web is very, very hard. So the crisis really is an economic one. And you know, London still has, I guess London is still the most competitive newspaper city in the world because it has so many daily and so many Sunday papers. But more and more people begin to say, people of my age, they say to each other this kind of old man thing, which is, you know, we've seen the best of it. And I guess that might be true. NDTV's Cricket app, Android and iPhone, faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free NDTV.com slash apps.